impediment against his 43rd big promotion. Tonight's the World Rose Cup when Big plays tribute to a Collingwood legend. Not only a great Collingwood premiership player and coach, he was also the welterweight champion, professional welterweight champion in Victoria in the 1940s. Bob Rose, rest in peace. Peter Mediatis, Daniel Moxie every Tuesday night, 930 on Channel 31 Digital. Open down, four rounds of boxing. Super World of Wage in the middle way. Country Victoria versus the city. Thank you, Eddie. Okay, here it is, you're going to make occupy the blue corner. From Bum Barber, Lana and Nurka in Victoria's beautiful Golden Valley. Coach Rob Pride at 68.60 in the Dragons. He's a Muay Thai boxer. 14 fights in that particular form of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, wearing black trunks with gold. Would you welcome Turbo Charge, Drew Mackey. And across the ring now is Slender Joe Dillacoli from Kane Lee in Melbourne's West. Wearing almost identical trunks, black and gold in professional boxing. Nine fights, two big wins, one inside the distance at 66.30 kilograms. When you welcome back, Robin Robbie Momento. <laughs> it judges the ring side of the pinpoint masters to Brian Henry, Brett McCormick, and Nicole Williams. Here we go, Lance. Your time given the bell, Daniel Memory. Four rounds of boxing. Proudly brought to you by Ultra Tune Auto Sevens. Welcome to Peter Matty Artist Fight Night, the Morven Town Hall in the inner eastern suburbs of Melbourne. The date is Friday, July the 8th, 2011, and you're watching Fight One of the 9th Annual Bob Rose Cup, celebrating the life of Collingwood's greatest footballer, Bob Rose, who was also a pro boxer with 14 fights. Tonight is sponsored by Ultra Tune, and I'm Patrick Skeen, your host tonight. Joining me as co host tonight, SEN Radio's Troy Zantuck. How are you doing, Troy? Very good, Patrick. Looking forward to the Bob Rose Cup later tonight. What a night, a smorgasbord of pugilistic precision, Pat. Fight one at welterweight, 67 kilos, four by three minute rounds. Both fighters in black and gold trunks. So, as identifies, Drew McKay is the one with hair, and Robert Menudo is the one without. Manito of Southpaw, Drew McKay making his debut. Manito's had 36 rounds over eight fights. He's got him on experience, but Drew McKay was a kickboxer, 14 Muay Thai bite fights, uh, 16 Muay Thai fights, 13 wins, three losses. Battle of Southpaw and Orthodox, and Drew McKay makes his debut, Troy. Uh, Drew Mackey, 20 years of age. Uh, Robert Manito, 29 years of age. Robert Manito, a crowd favorite, and a big right hand there by Manito, found the chin of Mackey. Another left hand. This could be a very short night, Pat. Mackey not being very scientific here, not looking to throw back, not but by the way of defense, but he's still in there trading. And this could come down to Cardio's Manito showing all his experience bearing in and landing the major shots thus far in round one. Manito's been in there. He's been in there with uh, big Steve Maxwell. Lost a split decision, lost to Terry Zoromanis, who we'll see later in the card. He's fought Tim Hunt. Uh, this could be just a matter of experience, but we don't know too much about Drew Mackey yet. He's throwing big roundhouses. Nice clubbing right hand there by Menito. A left hand uppercut. He goes to school on Mackey. He's got to get out of the corner. Does Drew Mackey. Mackey should start throwing back at some stage soon as he draws Menito into a clinch. But this is all Menito. It's a one-way street here in round one. Drew Mackey, Robert Menito. Menito, the southpaw on the attack. Showing all the benefits of experience, firing in some jabs and really causing a lot of trouble with that big straight left. Lands again on Mackey. Mackey goes into the clinch. He's not effectively clinching. He can't seem to stop the punch output. He's taking some big shots. And Matty Ropas has called this fight off in the first round. Big win to Robert Menito. Takes his record to three and six. And Drew Mackey's professional debut ends in the first round. The boy from Bunbatha in the Golden Valley. Unbelievable scenes here, Pat. Uh, a very, very uh, early stoppage, but uh, Matt Robus in charge. Well, he saw enough. He saw he's taken enough punishment, and uh, he lived to fight another day. You don't play boxing, you fight, and it's a serious sport, so I think the right thing was done overall. In the first round, the time, the time was 147 seconds. Your winner, red corner, Robin Rally Bonito.
Peter Maniata's fight night is the Baldwin Town Hall in the inner eastern suburbs of Melbourne. The date is Friday, July 8th, 2011. And you're watching fight two of the ninth annual Bob Rose Cup, celebrating the life of Collingwood's greatest footballer, Bob Rose, who was also a pro boxer with 14 fights. Tonight is sponsored by Ultra Tune, and I'm Patrick Skeen, your host. Joining me as co host is SEN Radio's Troy Zantok. How are you, Troy? Very good, Pat. So looking forward to this fight. Sir Rafa and Sean Ward. Four by three minute rounds. Zarafa in the black trunks with yellow trim and Jean-Claude in the white silver trunks with black tr trim and this is a classic clash of the prospects versus the gatekeeper Jean-Claude 54 rounds in the bank as a professional 13 fights this is young Michael Zarafa 2-0 from the Glenroy Boxing Club trained by the president Daryl Ford he's 2-0 he had a great amateur career did Michael Zarafa 19 fights for 17-2 attack with a right hand there Jean-Claude Jean-Claude's been in with a lot of the fighters. The Seraphim to the team early. And Jean-Claude's in a bit of trouble. No. And Matt Ropas has stepped in. And he's wow. waved off again. Michael Zarafa. That's another wave off, Pat. Big first round stoppage. Big first round's offing. Jean-Claude's got some blood on him. And that's some great work from Michael Zarafa. Another impressive win. Matt, Matt Ropas is just not going to allow the fighters to take that sort of punishment. That's the way he referees. And he's been in there himself, and he knows. And Michael, Michael Zarefa takes his record to 3 0. Congratulations, Michael, from Dane Swan. Well done, Dane. Thank you for joining us tonight with Peter McKenna, Dennis Tuttle. Renee King McMuggle, big win tonight, 45 seconds, pretty quick. Yeah, no, it was grouse, you know, I put him on the up in the gym and paid off in the night, which is grouse, we've got a great trainer, Darrell, more bully in the gym, thanks Cowboy and Wood, all the sparring cards, thanks to him, right, which is, like that guy, especially my mum and dad, thanks for being there for me and pushing me through the end, so yeah, it was good. Thank you. 
bit of any other event spectacular. Two bounce, two down, two first rounds, villages. Can we go a step further? Six rounds of boxing in the Bruce Wake Division. When you welcome the blue corner from Packard and Melbourne's Ella East. Coach Peter Hatton, assistant coach Paul Loss. In professional boxing at Eggfights, two wins, one draw. At 77 kilograms, wearing St. Louis clothes with a touch of white, almost carbon colours. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the center ring. Too sharp, Paul Burr. Is Paul Burr the man in the blue and the white? And across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, we'll say it in the blue corner. From head to back, part of Team Silver Fox, Paul Fifield, the coach, bringing the pace from the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, he's held the Victorian Light Heavyweight Championship, also a talented kickboxer at 80.90 kilograms, wearing a black trunks with a touch of gold. We you have a Mr. Cool, Joe D'Angelo. In charge of the action, Mr. Wayne Ashdown. Welcome to Peter Maniata's Fight Night at Walvin Town Hall. The date is Friday, July the 8th. It's standing room only, and you're watching Fight 3 of the 9th Annual Bob Rose Cup, celebrating the life of Hollywood's greatest footballer, Bob Rose. He was also a professional boxer with 14 fights. Tonight is sponsored by Ultra Chin. I'm Patrick Skeen, your host. Joining me, SEN's Troy Zantuck. How are you doing, Troy? Very good, Patrick. Uh, wonderful night, Bob Rose Cup night. It's uh, one of the feature nights in Victorian boxing. Make no mistake about it. And we just had Dane Swan up on stage between fights. Good to see him supporting the fight game. And now we have Paul Burke in the blue trunks and white trim versus Joe D'Angelo in the black trunks with gold trim. And this is a battle of the veterans. Paul Burke, 34. Joe D'Angelo, 35. Eight fights. Joe D'Angelo's had five fights. Paul Burke's had eight. Too sharp, Paul Burke's nickname. And Joe D'Angelo is Mr. Cool. What are we looking for here, Troy? Well, the uh, the fight uh, fight records of Paul Burke: eight fights, two wins, and five losses, and one draw. And uh, Jody Angelo, he's had five fights: the one win, two draws, one no contests. Whoa! Jody Angelo catches Paul Burke with a huge straight right, and Burke goes down in the first round. Jody Angelo goes back to the neutral corner. Referee Paul Burke is all over the place. Sends him to the new sends him to the neutral corner and puts a count on him. Could this be the third first round stoppage in a row, Troy? Wow, that was a massive hit there from Jody Angelo. Big straight right, I haven't seen anyone do that to Paul Burke. Paul Burke had some wins, he's still very groggy. As he moves straight into defensive mode, Jody Angelo moves in for the kill, catch him another straight right, and Paul, Di Paul Burke clinches. Joe D'Angelo now, Paul Firefield urging from the corner for Joe D'Angelo to finish it. Still a significant amount of this round to go. Paul Burke takes another big shot, and a rabbit punch to the back of the head. And it's called off by the referee, and Paul Burke is not in great shape. And that's a very, very impressive win to Joe D'Angelo. Your thoughts, Troy? Well, it's quite extraordinary scenes here at the Mulvan Town. All the first three fights have been determined in the first round. Official time, Damien Wallace. 123 in the first round, Joe D'Angelo, Mr. Noon. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank uh, my nephew, Manny Thomas, the Wayne Trains and uh, the boss, Big Gatto, for supporting me with this record. And as a better man, it's um, really done a lot of boxing and a lot of charity. And Manny Thomas is just an absolute legend, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much. I can't chase the real country's man In a legend in this time The guy who is his name One, two, three, go! <laughs> Just like a dancing, even as you hear 
ladies will pick Ben Chua from the Carroll Academy. Unbeaten in professional boxing. Five bouts, three wins, two draws. At 64.30 kilograms, with his name Monica on the front, with silver trunks and black trim with white. When you want them, ferocious Terry Zorromani. He did the scales at 64.30 kilograms. Silver black. Down, Silver black. Terry Zorromani. Silver black. 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 Welcome, Fight 4, Peter Maniata's Fight Night. It's standing room only at the Malvern Town Hall. It's Friday, July 8th, 2001, and tonight is the Bob Rose Cup. Fight 4, we celebrate the life of Collingwood's greatest footballer, Bob Rose, who was also a pro boxer with 14 fights. Tonight is sponsored by Ultra Tune, and I'm Patrick Skeen, your host tonight. Joining me is SEN's Troy Zantuck. Troy, who have we got? We have Terry Zuramanis up against Chad Rui Nadu, and let's hope this fight goes a little longer than the previous fights earlier in the night. Zuramanis in the silver and black trunks and Chad Roy Naidu in some very flashy black blue trunks with gold trim. 25 years of age, Terry Zuramanis up against Chad Roy Naidu, 32, so a seven year differential. And an experience differential as well, 16 fights, Chad Roy Naidu versus five for Terry Zuramanis. 61 rounds for Chad Roy Naidu, 17 for Terrible Terry. But uh, Terry Zuramanis is on the lines, he's three and oh, undefeated. And he's looked very good, and he's, uh, he's a noble warrior. Lands a good straight right there. First signal punch of the fight against Chad Roy Naidu. Chad Roy Naidu's been in, the in there with them all. Absolutely, Patrick. Uh, stopped in four by Billy Dib on Debut. Fought uh, warriors like Adam Wills. Uh, went eight rounds with Australian Worldweight Champion Victor Chernus. In his last fight, he lost to the New South Wales Welter Title in the Welter Title in a war over eight with Adrian Campbell. Campbell down in the first. Roy down in three and six. Well, Roy can punch and he's a tricky southpaw. Zuramanis loves to bang. This is going to be a good strategic battle between the veteran and the rising prospect. I've really liked everything I've seen about Terry Zuramanis. He's willing. Terrible Terry. He's got goes good technical by the skills. Decline. He wobbles. Chad Roy Naidu with a big straight right. As Chad Roy Naidu in a bit of trouble. He seems to recover, but that definitely buzzed him. During uh, Zuramanis' amateur career, he won four Victorian intermediate titles, 14 fights with the VABA. Oh, oh, Naidu comes in there. Zuramanis, Zuramanis ducks out of the way. Got the walk-up fighter style, has Terry Zuramanis. Terrible Terry, as he's known in the ring. Yeah, he's very good lateral, mo lateral movement. He can apply pressure when he wants to, and he's got a big hammer right hand. Right the judges like. Scores it cleanly and crisply and effectively. Chad Roy Nadu, uh, quite a journey. Born in Kedah, Malaysia, and then residing in Newcastle, New South Wales. And in the corner of Chad Roy Nadu, none other than the great Arnold Boratillo, who gave the great Manny Pacquiao a war uh, when they fought. Got stopped by the great man. And Benny, Ch Benny Chur is uh, in the corner of uh, Terry Zeromanis, former amateur fighter. As Roy Nadu gets Zeromanis in the corner, nothing significant landed. Trying to impose himself, not going on the back foot as Chad Roy Naidu, and he's a crowd pleaser, he'll get in there and bang. Both fighters just looking to find their range in this round one. Six by three minute rounds of this world weight contest. And they've set a pretty good pace and tempo. I give this first round so far to Terry Zeromanis. Chad Roy Naidu not having it all his own way. That welterweight, round two, Terry Zuramanis versus Chad Roy Naidu. I had the first round to a very busy Zuramanis, but he didn't have it all his own way. Chad Roy Naidu landed a couple from that tricky southpaw style, Troy. Absolutely, Patrick, and uh, Zuramanis winning that first round, but uh, not by too, too much. They do throwing some uh, nice left hand, right hand co combinations to the body of Zuramanis. Zuramanis fighting at a very measured pace. He can be a good technical fighter and he can also be drawn into a war. As Naidu lands a good couple of shots and Zuramanis punishes him coming on the inside as well. Landing some good body work and a good straight left from Zuramanis. Chad Roy Naidu comes back. Developing into a good contest here in the second round. Good, good, good solid lateral movement there by Terry Zuramanis. He's not being a stationary target here for Roy Naidu. 
No, he's uh, the type of fighter, Zuri Manus. He won't be rushed. Zuri Manus trying to catch Chadwell Naidu, reaching in. He's got a good uppercut, lands a couple of good straight scoring punches. Naidu comes back with a potential low bow. Fight goes on. Good ring generalship there from Terry Zuri Manus. Yeah, bouncing on the balls of his, balls of his feet. He's doing a, doing a wonderful job. But at the moment, is Zuri Manus. That's Naidu. Right Terry Zuramanis doesn't want to get right. caught in there. Land some very good shots on the counter. Right now, no oh, beautiful left hand by Zuramanis. Lovely left hook. Oh, punishing Roy Naidu. Interesting to see if he keeps coming and landing some good shots and good combinations there. Roy Naidu comes back. Some good inside work there by Terry Zuramanis. Really uh, stayed composed there on the ropes and landed some great counter punches. Good lead right from Zuramanis. Left hook just grazes the forehead. Roy Naidu and he's doing some great body work here. Good left rips and good uppercut showing the full range of punches here. It's Terry Zuramanik is putting on a great display in round two. Liking his lateral movement also Zuramanik showing that he can change gears. Well, he's throwing some mean shots in there as well and uh, Roy Naidu is not coming in now as willingly. He got punished last time on the inside. Terry Zuramanik's good lead right, good left to the body. Brilliant combination there by Terry Zuramanis, really finding his pace and his tempo here in round two. Nadu respecting the inside work of Zuramanis. There is still some power in that left of Nadu, so Terry Zuramanis. Great ring generalship, moving around the ring, good lateral movement, great left dig to the body. He's really making the plane, lands a good straight left, but didn't have any impact on Terry Zuramanis as the two fighters tie up. Step back, step back. Yeah, good to see Terry Zeromanis go back to the jab rather than trying to land that lead right all the time. You don't want to be too predictable. Just keep what you do, keep the variety of punches going. Good uppercuts and a great left rip to the body. All scoring punches. Terry Zeromanis clearly ahead now, but Roy Naidu, there's no quit on him. Continues to move forward. Landing shots trying to roughhouse Zeromanis. So great round, Zeromanis. <laughs> Round three, ferocious Terry Zeromanis versus Chad Roy Naidu. Chad Roy Naidu out of the blocks hard in the black trunks and gold. He's going for it. At inst under instructions of Ben Chua to show more aggression. He certainly has. Catches Zeromanis, reverts back to the rhythm. Gets back and jabs his way out of trouble there. Fantastic round two there for Terry Zeromanis. Showed every punch in the book, Troy. Certainly, Patrick. But uh, Naidu come out of the blocks in, uh, in that round and uh, caught Terry Zeromanis with a left. And uh, certainly Joel with the head back. Strategy worked initially, but he couldn't couldn't follow it up that element of surprise. But it's good to see he's still thinking of ways, trying to do things differently, moving to a plan B, plan C. Got a great old veteran in his corner in Arnold Boratillo. Right now he's gonna have to do something uh, left field here, do something he hasn't shown us so far. Comes in with a couple of combinations and tries to land Zuramanis with the right. Zuramanis counts with a straight right and left hook, works his way out of trouble, really doing some great work on the ropes there. The Suramanis camp would be happy to date with uh, the way Terry has, uh, has fought this fight. He's looking so far like Benny Chua has delivered him in great condition. He's moving a lot around the wing, he's bouncing on his toes. He's also at the appropriate time standing, delivering and keeping Chad Roy Nodu off and showing there is a power differential if they do trade toe to toe. This fight of world weights, six by three minute rounds viewers at home, Terry Zuramanis in the silver and black trunks, and they do in the black with the yellow piping. He's landing some good uh, good left hooks, good combos, left rip to the body and then going up to the head. Good evasive work, good defensive work as Chad Roy Naidu making the play. Still making this an interesting contest and coming forward. But um, his defense right now is very poor as Troy's wearing a lot of shots from Terry Zuramanis. What does Roy Naidu need to do? Well, I think, uh, I think he needs separation from Zuramanis because Zuramanis works well in close. So I think he needs to unleash with a few jabs. And then, uh, then with the overhand right for Nader. Sometimes you find these fights and lands a couple of good shots there. Nice left right hand combination to Zuramanis on the ropes. Tag with the left hook there by Zuramanis was Nadu. Zuramanis. I mentioned loves it in close, doing some good work, good combinations, good punch output, excellent punch volume in the fight so far. But Roy Naidu 
Still willing forward. Bull at a gate. Step back. Step back. Straight forward, no nonsense style. And he's giving to Zeromanis an excellent work out here. And this could be a battle of conditioning. He's very good, uh, Patrick, with the combination. Right. Scoring punches. He's putting scoring right. punches Step together. Back. Well, he was backed up for the first time in this round. By a couple of uh, hard shots from Chad Roy and I do, but he's shown a strong chin before. We've seen him and he's moving up in the ranks. Still only five fights to still a rookie. Left hook landing by Naidu, but not much on it. Much better round for Naidu, still have it for Zeromanis. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely, Patrick. Let's go, girls. Round four of schedule, six rounds. Terry's Zeromanis and Chad Roy Naidu in a very interesting battle. No quit in Chad Roy Naidu. He's again out. Start of round five. Start of round four. My apologies. Showing all his punches again. How did you have the last round? Yeah, look, uh, Naidu, I thought he, he, uh, he fought a very good round, but just had Zuramanis just a touch ahead, so I've got uh, Zuramanis in a shutout at the moment, Patrick. That's how my card reads as well, which are not the official scorecards. Zuramanis is doing everything right. On, Chad Roy Naidu continues to make his game, he continues to move forward, showing some good evasive skills there. He's got a lot more experience than Terry Zuramanis, and maybe this could bear out in the final three rounds. A good uppercut there again by Naidu. Terry Zuramanis. I better hope his conditioning holds and he conti continue the same pattern he's established in the first three rounds. Another good straight left from Chad Roy Naidu. I'd have them even so far in this round, Troy. It has been an even round, Patrick. You can make no mistake about it. Azura Manus does his best work in close. Once he gets in close, he's a very dangerous proposition. And landing up some other good shots straight down the pipe. Again, this could come down to a battle of conditioning. Zuramanis' punch output, this could be the round that he takes off. He's banked three uh, on, on my card. But you don't want to let someone like Chad Boyd do back into the fight. He's been eight rounds with Victor Chernu, one of the hottest prospects coming out of New South Wales now, and he can fight. He's been the longer distance. Yes, uh, Terry Zuramanis uh, on debut in uh, November 09, sub Sip Harris in the first round. And, uh, win over Menido in April, then a draw with Matwenko in uh, October 2010 at uh, the West End. Fought him again at Melbourne a month later, and uh, that was a draw again. Some say that Dezuri Manus was unlucky and uh, broke the draw cycle with a points win over four with Stavros Karanikolas in uh, April 2011 at Melbourne Town. Yeah, he's been a good fan-friendly fighter here at Melbourne Town Hall, but he's got his hands full here. And he's still a young pup in the game, he's still learning. He's got uh, some great fundamentals to work with. And Chad Roy Naidu is all over him. Uh, Arnel Boratello in his corner, urging him on to push him. Rough him up, get inside, try and break the patterns here, establish. And you'd almost at this stage have to give this round to Chad Roy Naidu, Troy. It's looking that way, Patrick, it is. Yeah, it's the punch out could have do. It's, uh, it's really, uh, he's really fired up this, uh, this round. He's been the effective aggressor, clean puncher. Ring generalship and his defense has improved. He's certainly not getting tagged by every shot. Come on, Chad! Wait. Step back. This could be around his corners urging on Chad Roy Naidu. They see something. They see Zeromanis' punch out puts down. They're now starting to see they're a chance. They're sniffing something here. Could it be experience uh, rising over the youngster, or could Terry Zeromanis be taking a round off? It's about round four. I had that round to Chad Roy Naidu, Troy, yourself? Yes, so I couldn't, uh, couldn't agree with you more there, Paddy. Just did enough in that round to do. Round five, penultimate round of Terry Zuramanis versus Chad Roy 2. We're at 67 kilos. Terry Zuramanis now comes out banging all action. He's been instructed by his corner to make the play early. Taking him, glance of good shots there to Chad Roy Knight do. Three or four uncontested shots there from Terry Zuramanis and looks like he's picked up the pace and the determination he showed in the first three rounds, Troy. He constructs his punches very well, uh, Terry Zuramanis. Uh, right. Technically, he's very, very good. Step back. Step back on the break. He's been very patient uh, in this fight. And, uh, and he certainly looks like he's got the zap back in his con punches there. And it's a three-punch combo. Chad Roy Nadu not, doesn't have the same pep in his punches, not coming forward like he was in the last round. He's got to get in there like he did, rough him up, smother him, take away his leverage. Uh, he's got to get straight back to the blueprint. Terry Zermanis in out, lands a good left hook. Another right. Chad Roy Nadu still getting in trying to land a tight one inside. Excellent exchange of punches there, both punches landed. 
Terry Zeromanis getting the better of things. It looks like he wobbled Chad Roy and I do there. Great exchange, Troy. Yeah, a glancing blow to the temple. Uh, certainly woke up Nadu. Terry Zeromanis back to that guy. Oh, great combinations there, Landon. Great left hook to the ribs, and that'll keep Chad Roy and I from coming in. Lands again. Roy Nodu still fancying himself with that left hand overhand right, working the body. Zeromanis counters off the ropes with a big punch and counters again. And gets the better of another great exchange. And Zeromanis certainly back to his dominant best in round five. Wow, well, I've been impressed with uh, Terry Zeromanis' counter punching in this round. Well, he's certainly come out harder, and uh, you can see he took that last round off, but he's, he's resumed normal programming now, and great punch output. Nadu is corner, urging him to get busy, urging him to make the play, take the fight up to Zuramanis. His, his style wasn't that pretty in the last round, but it was much more effective, Chad Roy Nadu, and he's copying another big shot there from Zuramanis. He's showing some good chin. Zuramanis landing a range of punches, good uppercuts. Tremendous scoring punches this round by terrible Terry Zuramanis. Chad Roy Naidu working up on the ropes again, but Terry Zuramanis has all the answers here in round five. The bounce is back. The flurries are back. The combinations are back. Great left hook to the ribs. And that Chad Roy Naidu felt that one. Another great straight left jab. Really showing off his full array of skills here. As Zuramanis moves, moves into the clinch. Really quite a dominant display here in the fifth round by Terry Zuramanis. He's got the momentum back and the tide of combat has switched back in the favour as he clubs Chad Roy Naidu to the back of the head. No knockout. No knockdown. The call from the Naidu corner. Do something now. Urging their charge on to get busy. He might be running out of petrol tickets as you said, Pat. Stamina could be Stamina and the conditioning. factor. Sixth and final round, welterweight, 66 kilos, ferocious Terry Zuramanis comes bursting out of the blocks against Chad Roy Nadu. How'd you have the last round, Troy? Oh, clearly to Zuramanis, he really stepped up the pace in that round and showed the full array, body shots, counter punching, jabs, left hooks, he, he just had the whole box and dice. Zuramanis has shown great resilience in this fight, he's come through a much more experienced fighter. Shown a great package of punches coming from all angles. And Roy Naidu has taken some huge shots to deliver and he's continued on. And Zuramanis has done some of his best work on this. He turns around Roy Naidu and lands some big body shots. Great body attack going, multiple shots, body attack. Chad Roy Naidu goes to come off the ropes. Zuramanis moving forward, the fighter on their feet. A magnificent display by Terry Zuramanis of counter punching and counter attacking. He's unloading the full arsenal, is Zuramanis. And the game, Chad Roy Naidu keeps marching forward, plotting forward. Looking for trying to unlock the combination here. Zuramanis leans in with the lead right, misses. Get in, Chad! Get in, Chad's the call from the Naidu corner. He needs to get busy. He needs a knockout because he can't win on points. Zuramanis coming home with a wet sail. Oh, he's dazzled uh, tonight, has Zuramanis. He's out slick, Chad Roy Naidu, but there's no quit in Chad Roy Naidu. He's been eight rounds before, and he's given Terry Zaramunas a great workout, and uh, had a minute comeback in the fifth, and uh, it's back to usual business now for Terry Zaramunas. Great lateral movement, good incisive jabs, great straight rights, some good left hooks, body uppercuts, just working different angles, improving with each fight. He's ferocious, Terry. Hey, hey. Just needs to be careful in this last round. He's boxed a tremendous fight to date. Well, he hasn't been shy to get in there and trade shots every time. Chad Roy Nadu has got him up against the ropes. He's landed some very heavy artillery. But the punches that have connected with Zuramanis, he's taken them on and he's weathered the storm. He's, uh, wow, he's been super impressive tonight as Terry Zuramanis. And Roy Nadu now fighting on heart and determination. Still continues to come forward, trying to land the uppercut. He's landed a few times tonight, but he doesn't have the power to really make a serious dip. And for the most part, Terry Zuramanis' defense has been watertight. Great short jab there to the kidneys. Great left hook there by Zuramanis. Both fighters now, 30 seconds to go. Look to step up a bit. Zuramanis in the center of the ring, starting to exchange. Zuramanis landing some big shots. Chad Roy Nadu still trying to throw himself. This has developed into a very entertaining round. 
both fighters going toe to toe Troy that's enjoyable stuff absolutely in the last 30 seconds of this fight and they're going absolutely toe to toe Zuramanis he needs to be careful he's got the fight and he's keeping keeping distance from Nadu and another right hand and there it is what a tremendous fight Patrick Steen yeah, crowd pleasing fight Terry Zuramanis and Chad Roy Nadu Great fight. Great fight. Wonder who will win. I've got Zuramanis yourself. Terry Zuramanis, a resounding winner, but we'll go to Howard Lee, our master of ceremonies, for the official decision. Okay, we have a unanimous decision, ladies and gentlemen. Judges Brian and Henry Kirk McCoy had the same score tables, 59-55. Final card, Matt Rivers, 60-55. Returning his unbeaten record from the red corner, ferocious Terry Zonjanis. July the 8th, 2001. The setting is the beautiful Morven Town Hall. And it's the ninth annual Bob Rose Cup celebrating life of Collingwood's greatest footballer, who was also a pro boxer with 14 fights. Tonight is sponsored by Ultra Tune, and I'm Patrick Skeen, your host. And joining me, Troy Zanta. How are you doing there, Troy? Fantastic, Pat. And, uh, fantastic win to Terry Zuramanis in our previous bout, but really looking forward to Callan Orchard showing his wares up against Dinesh Kant. Dinesh Kant has come out of the blocks hard. He's got a knockdown of Michael Bolly. Callan Orchard, Dinesh Kant has come out firing now and he's got huge punch output. And Callan Orchard better watch himself here because Dinesh Kant is all business early. Orchard lands a big shot of his own. And these two have started off. <laughs> and a oh, 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 right hand! Callan Orchard lands an uppercut on Kant. And Kant's still rocking forward. Crowder on their feet. Holy guacamole, Patrick. A massive right hand by Callan Orchard. Oh, and that's oh! it! And Dinesh Kant goes down, he gets up. And Matt Ropers puts a count on Dinesh Kant. Sends him to the neutral corner. And starts the count now. What an amazing start to the fight. Callan Orchard looking cool, 
as a cucumber. Big John Long McCubbin in the corner, urging his boy on. Oh, and Orchard lands another big bomb and has a need to develop power. We've seen him come back from being down against Dane Campbell. He's shown chin. And today's showing a full array of punches. He means business. Really buzzing Dinesh Camp now. And Dinesh Camp, you remember, had Australian champion Michael Bolling down the first round. And he puts down Callum Orchard himself. And Callum Orchard goes down. Huge right hand there from Dinesh Camp. What a round this has been. And Callum Orchard is in all sorts as he retires to the neutral corner. And Matt Ropers puts a count on him. And now Callum Orchard is in a world of hurt. Up, Unbelievable scenes in this first round. Dennis and Camp he goes and drops Callum Orchard on his haunches again. And Matty Ropers, he's out on his feet here is Orchard. And Matty Ropers has called that off. And it's a boil over. Dennis Camp. Pandemonium's broken loose, Patrick, at the Melbourne Hello. Town Hall. First round, Dinesh Kent over Callan Orchard and the crowd at Melvin Town Hall are absolutely stunned. Patrick Skeen. That's one of the best rounds of fighting that will go down as round of the year. What a seesawing, unbelievable fight. What hard by both fighters.
Thank you. 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 Welcome to Peter Maniar's Fight Night. It's Fight 6 at the Malvern Town Hall in Melbourne. The date is Friday, July 8th, 2011, and you're watching Fight 6 of the 9th Annual Bob Rose Cup, celebrating the life of Collingwood's greatest footballer, Bob Rose, who was also a pro boxer with 14 fights. Tonight is sponsored by Ultratune, and I'm Patrick Skeen, your host tonight. Joining me as co-host, SEN Radio, GBU crew, Troy Zantuck. How are you doing, Troy? Very, very good, Patrick, and uh, a sensation was caused in the last fight. Can't defeating Callum Orchard, and what a tremendous round of boxing that was. It certainly was, and uh, fight six and super middleweight, 76.2 kilos, six by three minute rounds, Pradeep Singh, Indian warrior in the black and orange trunks, and Amir Hussain Ranjar, the Persian tornado in the black and silver trunks. Ramjo taking into the uh, 21 fights, 8 wins, 13 losses. Pradeep Singh, the impressive record, 20 fights, 16 wins, 3 losses and 1 draw. And both have had about the same sort of experience. Ramjo's had 101 rounds, Pradeep Singh has 119 rounds in the bank. Pradeep Singh uh, on paper appears to be the stronger here, but we don't know much about Amir uh, Hussain Ramjo. He's a mysterious Persian, he's based in Bangkok, he's been down here a couple of times. He does have, uh, he's coming off two, two consecutive wins in a row. As Pradeep la Singh lands a good left jab straight down the pipe and is getting the better of things early. He's in the left hook on the break. And that's his first warning. Pradeep Singh, born in India, now residing in Lilydale, Victoria. Pradeep Singh trained by Frank Bianca, former TV ringside fighter and a good amateur. Also Mick Ghetto's personal trainer. Both fighters are orthodox. Ramjar very much a go-forward fighter. Pradeep Singh has a lot of skills. He's shown a lot of skills in his career. Bob Rose Cup Night brought to you by Ultratune. The uh, boys at Ultratune doing a wonderful Stop. job. Sean Buckley and uh, Norm George. Great sponsors of this event and boxing in general. So you got to take your hat off to those guys. They, they keep uh, everything running along smoothly. Pradeep Singh getting through. With a couple of straight rights there and still getting the better of these exchanges. But Ramjar is willing. He keeps coming forward. He's not a great scientific boxer, but he's very willing. Celebrity field night here at uh, Malvern Town Hall. Dane Swan in the tent in attendance to Collingwood champ. Also, Renee Kink, the incredible Hawks here, and the great full forward of the 60s and 70s, the great man, Peter McKenna. Great to see Peter here tonight. Seeing, looking busy, moving forward with intent, lands a good lead right, landing some good shots on Ramjar now, Ramjar steps into trade, takes a few good shots, and Pradeep Singh works inside, Back in, the head. in close, the left uppercut, right. looking to land the overhand right, and it's getting a little bit sloppy from Ramjar here early, or midway through the first round. A little bit of blood now coming from Ramjar's left eye, there's a decent sized welt there. Pradeep Singh has built up an impressive record, as we've said, Pat. 20 fights for 16 wins. He's got all the tools of the trade, has Pradeep. One in India and now fights out of the Ivano boxing gym. Lives in Lily Dunn. Big round, Pradeep Singh first round. Is that how you had it, Troy? Yeah, Pradeep Singh in that first round. So we're off to a great start in this super middleweight. Six by three minute rounds. Round two, Pradeep Singh, the Indian warrior versus the Persian Python, Amir Hussain Ramjar. Ramjar in the black and silver trunks got the worst of things on my books in the first round. How'd you have it, Troy? Yeah, I've got to uh, concur with you there, Patrick. Pradeep Singh did enough in that first round. It's, uh, he's landed some very good straight punches thus far. He's singing his drawn first blood. Ramjar bleeding from the left eye, but Ramjar still coming forward and lands a good shot on Pradeep Singh as well. Change of rights. Right. Pradeep Singh cuffs Ramjar around the air. Pradeep, good defense, good compact fighter, good skills. And some good straight punches there. Ramjar at his best going forward. Best not get caught on the back foot by Pradeep Singh, who's going to win this fight at range. But Ramjar comes forward, willing. Persian looks like he's come to fight, Troy. 
Yeah, Singh does his best work with separation, Patrick. He's uh, left, that left hand jab with that overhand right is his, his money combination, make no mistake about it. Ramjo looks like he can see the opening, but he just can't close it down. A slow uh, looping overhand right. Singh can see them coming. Pradeep Singh fighting in the contender series. Sonny Michelangelo was his opponent in that. Starting to land some heavy shots there on Ramja. Ramja starting to uh, show the effects of the wear and tear. I don't know what sort of conditioning he has living in Iran. Uh, he's fought his last two fights in Persia. Where Iran takes a big straight right from Pradeep. And now leaving himself open to that overhand right. Expect to see Pradeep cashing in now. Looking to assert his authority is Pradeep Singh, the Indian warrior. Ramja still continues forward, trying to land an uppercut. Yeah, but uh, no real hot master there in the... Oh, a beautiful oh. left-hand jab there by the Indian warrior. That worries Ramja, and he started brilliant punching to the body there by Pradeep Singh. Looks like he started to quarter him now, and this is a very big first round. Oh, oh. another straight right, but Ram Ramja's in trouble. Indian warrior moves forward. Ramja's still got his hands up, he's still conscious. He's taken some big shots here. Pradeep Singh started moving the kill. Great body shots, not panicking. Putting in good, solid, measured punches. Let overhand right by Pradeep Singh. The leg started to buckle of Ramja. Ramja now is still getting punchy. He's still moving forward. He won't be denied. Beautiful left hook there by the Indian warrior, Pradeep Singh. And Ramja now looks like a matter of time. He can't take kicking those big straight rights and overhand rights. By Pradeep Singh, a matter of time as Singh starting to put together some combination of Ramja makes the round. Very brave stuff. Well, Pradeep Singh coming on strong in that round, Patrick. It, uh, it looks as though it's only a matter of time. Pradeep Singh, indeed, a matter of time. Round three, super middleweight, it's Iran versus India. By way of Lindau, Pradeep Singh in the black and orange trunks. Had a huge second round there, really put a number of shots at Amir Hussain Ramja. It's all business still coming forward, but it looks like it's a matter of time. Pradeep Singh finding a home for that big overhand right. Ramja does not seem to have the power to keep Singh off as he murders him. Referee moves in closer now, assessing the amount of damage being done here to Ramjar's Pradeep Singh moved into the kill showing some good killer instinct here Ramjar still got his hands up showing great chin wearing a number of shots but only a matter of time trying to find his way out of trouble no thought for defence target practice at the moment for Pradeep Singh showing huge bravery in there some big shots landed by Pradeep Singh and he could be in trouble it's over the referee steps in that's a stellar performance from Pradeep Singh Wayne Ash down, referee waving it off, Pradeep Singh coming home with a wet sail, he's back in town, the Indian warrior. And Amir Hussain Ramjar stays on his feet, as brave as you could ask. A gutsy effort by Ramjar, but make no mistake about it, Pradeep Singh, his corner, very happy with proceedings tonight, and he's back in town. <laughs> Gregory White is now stopped the contest. 52 seconds into round three. The only winner taking his record of 17 wins, one draw in 21 fights, the Indian warrior, Pradi Singh. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Hey, uh, you pick up the pace and fight it right here for Paris Productions. <laughs> okay, thank you, Lisa. I'll put you in. Brandon, you pick up the pace. The quiet version of that maybe. But then you come to that very strong and you get a third round stage. I got that for you. I'm having some I'm having some hot and blue tie park this year, so why is it not really hard to have an investor? Thanks, bud. And thank you, everyone. Come here, let's 
support me. Um, but I'll go ahead and say that. Thanks, guys, for everyone. And I would like to thank my brother, my trainer, Frank Pietro, Matt, Kudos, Pima, and my sponsor, Kevin Javakis. Thanks, Kevin, for my last growth. And is anyone left? That? <laughs> That's all good. Fight night, it's main event at Morgan Town Hall. Date is Friday, July the 8th, and you're watching Fight 7 of the 9th Annual Bob Rose Cup, celebrating the life of Collingwood's premier footballer, Bob Rose, who was also a pro, pro boxer. Tonight is sponsored by Ultra Tune. I'm Patrick Skeen, your host, and joining me is SEN's Troy Zantuck. How are you doing, Troy? Oh, Patrick, what a night. What a night of fight. The smorgasbord of pugilistic precision. And here we are at the business end, the Bob Rose Cup. Manny Huamos taking on Kashif Muntaz. 
It's eight by three minute rounds and on the line is the Victorian light heavyweight title. Flamas in the black trunks, the great pit bull with the yellow trim. Kashi with the flag of Pakistan, the flag of New Zealand on his shorts in the royal blue with white trim. Manny Flamas, Patrick, 29 years of age, 11 fights, eight wins, two losses, one draw, five KOs side the distance so he has got a knockout punch Manny Vlamos and there's some history between these two Manny Vlamos and Kashif Muntaz have fought before Vlamos third fight and Kashif Muntaz actually scored an upset so Vlamos tonight looking for revenge Vlamos the great pit bull fighting out of Brian Levere's gym and he's from Yay in the Golden Valley and he trains out at Lilydale Kashif Muntaz's last fight he stopped Les Sherrington number four in the world He's known to ham it up a bit when he gets hit. He's known to play up. Beautiful Flamas left hook. hook. Tremendous left hook there by the pit bull. Finding his range early on in this opening round. Kashif Muntaz is a bit of a hot and cold fighter. You don't know which fighter is going to turn up. He can bang. And he's got a good straight right. Kashif. Manny Vlamas looking very, very strong in the first exchanges. Ten fights, eight and two, and in the fight he did lose. He had Johannes Mwetapunga, the Australian champion, in trouble. So Manny Vlamas is building a good career here so far. Beautiful left, left hook from the counter punch of Vlamas. He means business to the great pit bull. Some unfinished business with Kishif Mamtas. Vlamas, we've seen historically, likes to go to the body. He's got a good array of punches. Montez clowning. With the gloves down now. Trying to invite Manny in. Vlamas already at 10 fights as a season campaigner. He's not going to fall for that. As he winds up, Kashi gets in there and smothers. A recipe for disaster. The showboating of Montez. If he gets an overhand ride from the great pit bull. What we do have is a difference in activity. Kashif Muntaz has fought 33 fights in the past four years and the Pitbulls fought uh, twice in the past two years. A great body shot. Kashif Muntaz learning. Play to the whistle. Or to the referee's instructions. Shrug of the shoulders by Muntaz. Both fighters touch gloves. Great sportsmanship. And that is Kashif Muntaz money punch. The straight right down the middle. That's the one that stopped Les Sherrington in the first round of that boil over. Manny, Manny Vlamas, very powerful left. Did rough the first round. How'd you have a choice? Vlamas did enough. <laughs> round two, Victorian light heavyweight title. Big crowd contingent here supporting Manny, the pit bull Vlamas. This is Kashif Muntaz. I had Vlamas round one quite convincingly, Troy. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Patrick, and uh, just for the viewers at home, the pit bull in the black with the yellow piping, Muntaz, the blue shorts with the black and white piping. Muntaz became airborne. Pit bull in a show of strength. He's not going to be bullied by Kashif Muntaz. He wants to rough it up. The pit bull's very strong himself. The Bob Rose Cup up for grabs in a, a tremendous uh, attendance by some AFL and VFL stars tonight. Des Tudnam, Peter McKenna, Renee Kink, Dane Swan, triple premiership player from the Brisbane Lions, Chris Johnson and Roy Ramsey, former North Melbourne and Essendon Backman. The crowd appreciating some of uh, Kashi Pinto's antics. He likes to pull faces and play around. He's in with the serious opponent here in the pit bull, Manny Vlamas. Good left hook there by Vlamas. Crowd appreciates on and lands again. Kashi comes in, roughs him up and turns his back. Kashi goes down, is pulled up by the referee. And Manny Vlamas has been deducted a point. Wayne Ashdown having a word to Vlamas. Mumtaz on one. He's on bended knee, Mumtaz. That's a very unpopular decision. The crowd not liking it, Patrick. Very fascinating. One by Ota. Very fascinating manoeuvre by referee Wayne Ashdown. Trying to pull Kashi up. You won't see that in the medical journals there, Zanis. You certainly won't, Patrick, this fight. Well, it's living up 
to all it was going to be. As Flavis. It's, it's tumble. It's bizarre. As Mumtaz comes back into the fray as well. And referee Wayne Ashdown wrestles the two apart. There's a plenty of niggle in this fight, ladies and gentlemen. Mumtaz up Is against Flamis. Kashi Mumtaz seems to have uh, composed himself. Wayne Ashdown, he's got his hands full in there, Patrick. Kashi Mumtaz using some good lateral movement. Probably in his interest not to continue to come in his strange money, Flamis. He does have some good skills. He can use from the outside. He's got a good jab, as does Vlamas. Right. He's degenerating into, uh, into a bit of a wrestling match. Vlamas tends to do his best work on the inside. He likes to operate on the rib cage in the bread basket. Mumtaz goading him, showboating again. And he does have good skills, but he needs to keep his hands up. Okay. Stay on the game. We have seen Kashi Mumtaz does have power, and he can do it early or later in the fight. Right hand from Palmas. We'll Wayne Ashdown pulls the point of Cassius Mumtaz. A deduction of one point from Mumtaz as Wayne Ashdown laid down the law. One point. Cassius right. Mumtaz is arguing with random members of the crowd, and that's not going to done. He's in a prize fight here. Mumtaz! What the hell's going on there? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Skeen, this fight's had everything to date. <laughs> Both fighters losing a point in that last round. Plenty of spice in this fight. Manny Vlamas up against Kashif Mumtaz. These guys have history, and isn't it showing? Both fighters have been stopped, so uh, they both have enough power to stop this. How would you score that last round, Troy? Yeah, look, I had Lamas in front. I've got him in front uh, to date. I think he's thrown the cleaner punches, more combinations. And they've both lost a point, so it's even. It looks like it's settling down to a bit more of a conventional fight. Yeah. So far. Wow, here we go again. It's becoming more like a wrestling match. Now Kashi Montez is turning his back, complaining. Many Vlamas is calling him in. Kashi still moving forward. Well, Wayne Ash down the referee, the third man in the ring, certainly earning his money tonight as he separates Montez and Vlamas. Montez seems to be getting injured in a number of different ways. When he does uh, settle down to actually throw some punches. So he's doing some reasonable work. He's still not oh! over. And Manny Vlamas is standing over. He's landed a big shot on Kashi Mumtaz. Wayne Ashdown launches him back to the corner. Mumtaz hitting the canvas with a thud on the crowd at Melbourne Town Hall. They are lapping this up. Manny Vlamas showing the feeling this fight. Standing over. Kashi Kashi Mumtaz, what's my name style? Referee Wayne Ashdown brings Kashi Mumtaz into the centre ring. And that really, that may have changed the course of the fight. Kashi really toasting Manny Vlamas' power. Pitbull with a huge left hook. It's a real brawl. If you wanted a technical fight, well, hey, you haven't got it. But if you want action of plenty, here it is. As Vlamas unloads with a left hook. Vlamas oh, loving the inside stuff as well. And he will not allow Kashi Mumtaz to bully him. Kashi complaining to the ref again. Wayne Ashdown is not going to help. He's got to face many Vlamas in there. Oh, big right hand there by Vlamas. Kashi Mumtaz showing a huge chin, absorbing those shots from many Vlamas. Wow. You can feel those from here. Got a, a, a titanium chin as uh, Mumtaz. And Manny Vlamas doesn't look like he's missed a beat with his inactivity over the last couple of years. Took a break for the game. He's picked up from where he's left off. Great round of Vlamas. Stay back. 
round four. It's the Victorian light heavyweight title on the line. And what a fantastic fight this has been so far. Manny Vlamis, the stronger of the two fighters in the first three rounds, but Kashi Bumatan is fighting a very eclectic, unconventional fight, but he's still there and he's still throwing Troy. Absolutely, Patrick. It's had it all. It's been an entertainment spectacular today. This fight between Mumtaz and Lamas for the Bob Rose Cup. A high stakes fight. Bradley brought to you by Ultra Tune. The boys at Ultra Tune doing wonderful work in the uh, with the boxing community. Sean Buckley and uh, Norm George of uh, Georgios. And also the team at Orchid in Hotel Resort in Angeles City in the Philippines. Say hello to Kevin Walkie when you're up there. And that's the Orchid in Hotel Resort. Thanks for supporting the game. And Manny Vlamas launches into Kasia Muntaz here in the fifth round. And pulls him up against the rope. And Kasia now has pulled his back. And he's hitting the referee away. Kasia Muntaz has gone down. And he's copping some stick from the crowd. It's difficult to know whether now there's some blood coming from the eye. But one of the brighter moments we're seeing in the boxing ring now. This is like absolutely extraordinary, Patrick. And it looks like he's... Uh, Looks like he's quitting. Wayne Ashdown has called the fight off. Kasia Bumtaz. Lama's shaking his head. He just can't believe this. He wanted to win, but not in this fashion. What a tremendous fight, but Mumtaz still on his knees. Wayne Ashdown in total disbelief at what has just happened. And the rough out tactics a bit too much for Kasia Bumtaz. And if Lama's the victor.
Bowling and Truth and Hamish's Lead to One represent Sean Buckley, also all the sponsors, Lee Crane's, uh, Megan Thomas is helping us somewhere here, but uh, all the boys, but thanks to all the sponsors and also thanks to everyone who's come to support tonight. It's been a great fight night, it's been controversial, and it's been a lot of fun, but uh, that's boxing.